Hi, welcome to Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit. In this video, I'm going to pick up a Mountfield petrol lawnmower. I've just won on Facebook Marketplace for just £30. Showed a picture, said I can't get it started from last year. The air filter box is on the wrong way around. The sticker's snapped at the top where someone's had a dig about in there. And it didn't have a grass box. I said, have you got the grass box? I said, yes. So I've got a complete lawnmower to pick up for £30. We're gonna go and pick it up and we're gonna get started right now. If this is your first time on Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit YouTube channel, be sure to hit subscribe and tick the bell notification icon. That way I can keep you up to date on everything that's going on on the channel and you won't miss a thing. And the best of all, it's completely free. You might have seen the last video, I've just listed that on Facebook Marketplace for £110, which I think is reasonable. I've already had an inquiry about that as well. I'm going to see if they get back to me. So this is the more I'm talking about. It's a Mountfield SP470. Martin Butler will like this. He loves these. It's, uh, Retro Restores Martin Butler. He always laughs at me when I buy these. But classic thing. Air filter box the wrong way around. Big tear in this sticker. So someone's had this recall cover off. These uh, cables look to be in a strange position. I think they've just undone the cable ties. Obviously uh, looks in decent condition. And once again, they've taken the photograph without the grass box. So I've asked the question, do you have the grass box? Answer, once again, yes. So a complete Mountfield SP470 lawnmower, £30. We're going to go and pick it up in the mower mobile. I'm going to start that up now and we'll take a ride out in that. And we'll pick this mower up. Planning on a bit of a quiet night tonight. I thought I'll just come and tidy my garage up and put this mower away. And I'll edit the video on this one. And you've probably seen it on the... My YouTube page by now, but I ain't got around to editing that at this time of filming anyway. So instead of tidying this up and editing a video, I'm actually gonna go and pick this lawnmower up. We'll go and get that straight away because what you've got to do on Facebook Marketplace, as soon as they come on, you've got to be looking for these things and you've got to offer to go and get it straight away. That's exactly what we're gonna go and do now. Here we are then, a uh, another SP470 Mountfield. Um, needs a bit of work and there's a, a problem with this drive cable here as you can see it's all pulled out of this housing here as well underneath it looks alright it's all on the uh, blade boss alright but look at this this is a brand new box brand new grass box look I'm not sure why they've got a brand new one but he said they bought uh, another one of these so whether they've just decided to um, swap the grass box for it I don't know but I can't imagine you buy a brand new one of these but uh, maybe this grass box fits on a newer model anyway either way around I've got a, a new grass box this is odd. Look at this here. This is actually for the where the pull cord goes there. Right, so we've just taken a look at this mower, and we, me and David can't find what's wrong with this, can we? Yeah. Looks all right, doesn't it? I mean, the cables. It looks like let's take take a close look at these cables, but there's been a bit of tinkering about going on, but I can't see anything that's not working because of it. What's all happened to you with this, this wire? Yeah. Well, he's had it taped with this silver tape, hasn't he? What's this one then? This is the brake, isn't it? So, oh, it's got a little gap in there, can you see in there? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's got a gap in there, can you see in that gap there? Yeah. Watch your fingers, if I pull it, does it move, yeah? It's a brake working. Mm -hmm. So look under there. Yeah, that looks to be releasing right. Well, what we've got here, the drive. I'm a bit susceptible of this drive, because this cable's coming out. I'm not sure if this drive's going to work when we get this running. I might actually unbolt this engine and just take it completely off this mower, but it's pulling all right, but it's just a little bit slack. But until we get it running, we don't know, so... Let's do something, let's just take this air filter box off and we'll drop a bit of fuel in here and see if this actually runs. One thing I've noticed when you try to push this mower along a bit, it's really difficult to push. I'm not sure if the self-drive might not work on this yet, but let's take a look in the back of there. There's a bit of grass in there, we'll have to dig that out as well, won't we? I'll just take a look at this, but I'm not sure if the self-drive might have packed in. So we might have to have a look at, uh, at this self-drive. But we'll just try and get it running first and see exactly what's going on. We'll clean that grass out first, can't we? So you're going to dig in there, aren't you, and just get some of this grass out? Yeah. That's a great way of keeping this deflector up. Just get a bit of wood there like that. And just push that out of the way. And you're going to dig all that out of there, aren't you? Yeah. yeah, you dig all that out of there. You can use your fingers and just pull it out and put it on the grass for me if you want. We'll clean all that out. So we don't want that belt coming off, do we? I love these lawnmowers. We've sold loads of these, haven't we? Yeah. Look at all that in there. Let me lie under here, isn't it? Let's just have a quick look. Yeah, there's like bags and stuff in there. Let me have a look there, just a second. This sort of stuff ain't gonna help, is it? Look at that. Yeah, there's a lot in here. I think this is why it's difficult, isn't it? You see all this stuff down here? Oh, yeah. I hope there's no mice in here. See all this? Look at this garbage here, look. We want all that out there. In fact, it might just be easier. We'll just try and get it running first, leave it. Um, we'll just try and get this running first. I think the easiest way to do this is just to set this belt guard off underneath. Let's drop some petrol in here, man, and see if it works. 
there's a few telltale signs with this that someone's had a mess about with it isn't there? you can see they split this sticker trying to get here so this cover's obviously been off in fact it's still quite loose but that screw's not even in there is it it's a bit slack there air filter box classic sign isn't it what's wrong with the air filter box well it looks very rusty and, and yeah and is, is it the wrong way around yeah wrong way around pull that off there took that out of there good lad I'll take that off for you so get that out of the way mind your knees pal no, that don't look too bad does it mm. no it's all a bit weird isn't it but yeah what have we got Dave? we've got a full set of governor springs in here have we got two yep. springs yep good that's good and everything moving freely right let's drop some petrol in here let's try it doesn't look to be too much wrong with this does it we just put some petrol in here this is a bit better than the last one we had wasn't it yeah remember that other one that sv200 oh. Do you like that one? No. Well, not fun that one was it? But let's get back to this basic one and get this one sold. What we're going to do is try and start this mower up. Alright, let's prime it. Let's see, see if any fuel's going through. That's going through there alright. We've checked the blades on right so you're safe aren't you? I can't understand why this don't work. Let's connect that up again. We know this brake's working alright don't we? Yep. Right, so prime that. Let's try it then. I'm always hesitant when you pull it over first time in case it kicks back. Right, well that was interesting, it starts and runs, it's a little bit slow and a little bit lumpy but uh, the problem we seem to have with this lawnmower is it's like, it's like Herbie, it just drives itself, doesn't it? Yeah. Like the love bug. So we'll have to take a look at this, but hey, it starts and runs, it's all good stuff. So I think there's obviously a problem with this uh, this drive here, so I think the, the first thing we're just going to do, we're just going to take off the, the uh, cover underneath to the belt drive and we'll just take a look at that make sure it's not filmed just just try to free everything off do the simple things first but I may want a cable on here as well so they said it didn't run but I reckon they've just got rid of this because it's got a problem with the self drive you can see here this cable tie is just odd so let's have a look at that so look at these screws these are really rusty I've got to get these off to get this cover off here be interesting to see how much grass is in there so we're going to unbolt this here of course I've removed the spark plug for this job so we're going to have to remove a few parts we're going to remove this here we're going to try and wire brush these off and just back these off really carefully without rounding these off because these look like they've never been off and I'm hoping it's just because this is full of grass that the springs aren't activating as they should and the self drive's not working so let's try and wire brush these off and get this off so sometimes these are really tricky to get off and I haven't actually managed to get these off with this, this screwdriver what I tend to do with this is I have a, an impact driver although I'm not going to hit it with it I find with the uh, the sort of the weight of the driver behind it a lot of the time I can get in here and with the weight because there's so much more weight behind it and push it against it I can actually just start to get these undone as you can see there that's just coming off because I'd wire brush that off I was kind of beginning to round this off really just using this normal screwdriver and it may be just because it's a, a better fit but it's just the weight behind it I've done that a lot and been successful at removing these belt guard covers using that impact driver so there's a tip for you it's just from like just get enough weight behind there to turn that these are really rounded off I think I'll probably have to replace these won't we yeah. unless I drop them in my uh, little ultrasonic cleaner it cleans them out pretty good that's one out I put that in there let's see if we have the same success with this other side here just go don't they? just see how it just turns you're just getting away with it aren't you bad then weren't they yeah be interesting to see how much rubbish drops out the back of here david right right let's just whip this blade off here with this impact tool let's just take a look at that make sure that's on nice there we go. What's this orange thing poked to be like this know. wrapper? Looks like a Haribo bag, doesn't it? Yeah. I've already undone that now. Let's just take that off. Should only be hand tight. Looks like some bag of Haribos. Are you hungry? Yeah. You're not eating these off here, are you? 
Oof. Oh, look at this here. Look at that, David. Oh, it's horrendous. I mean, that might be why this uh, whole spring mechanism isn't working on this self-drive and it's it's driving itself. Let's have a full one under here. Can you see under there? Let's have a look under here. There's a lot of dirt in here. We're gonna have to have a dig around in here. Let's just remove that for a lot of these. Wine animals. All right, okay. Yeah, there's a lot. See all this in here? There's actually springs in here, and if these springs can't move freely, of course, this belt drive is not going to work correctly. So let's give it half a chance at first and let's clear this out manually and just see if we can get this drive working, actually disconnecting, disengaging, so we can actually use this mower. Because at the minute, you can't sell it like that with this drive running off. It'd be like a Norman Wisdom film, aren't you, when you're chasing it around the yeah, garden? Yeah. <laughs> This is what I was trying to show on the last video as well. I always said these belt drives are really full of stuff. I mean, look at that. I mean, you know, look what it's supposed to be like. Let's go and empty that in the bin. Yeah, so let's give it every chance before we start taking, you know, parts off it. Let's get rid of all that in there. Look at the state. We'll clean that off properly in a second, but we've got rid of most of that, haven't we? Mm. Well, my dad's just cleaning his, you know, carpet washer out. Just whilst it's nice and sunny. Right, so I've cleaned this out as much as I can. There's not a lot of sp sort of spring tension in that. And these springs aren't moving an awful long way in the back of here. Can you see? They're not really releasing. But I've cleaned it out as much as I can. And before I do anything else, let's just try and start it up again. And see under here, I've got all this rubbish out of here so you can, it's free to work as it should. So let's just try it again and see what it's like before we do anything else. Right, so I've bolted this blade on. And I'm just going to try it again. I think what we might have here is just a, a classic example of a cable that's stretched but I'm going to try this and hopefully it'll be better than it was because I couldn't get it to shut off at all before these wheels were just constantly turning and turning even when I didn't have hold of the uh, the handle it might smoke a bit this has of course been tipped up like I've said in loads of other videos if you tip these things up there's a good chance they're going to smoke which is why I like to use the uh, the oil extractor that I've actually uh, done a review video on So that problem's still there. You might see that smoke in a bit. So what I think I'm going to do with this mower is I'm going to actually uh, change over this drive cable on this mower. I think it's stretched so far, it's not doing the job it's supposed to do. So I'm going to get one of those and we're going to swap it over and we'll see if this fixes the problem. Just before I do that, I remember this from a few years ago when I first started repairing for profit. There's actually an adjuster on here. You can see how much slack there is in this cable here. What I'm actually going to do, this doesn't actually bolt through the handle. This actually undoes and you can slide this around. So if I slide this along, this should actually in theory tighten this cable up it may help this self-drive so let's try that little trick first so you can undo that if i slide this down here that's tightening that cable up so what i'm going to do is i'm going to retighten it there and we'll just try it again right so i've done everything i can think of so far including tightening it up but it's a bit of a giveaway i've been having a problem with this with this massive cable tie this has obviously got broken off at some point so this uh, this cable I'm hoping is the uh, the problem to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this cable. I've no choice in this occasion just to purchase a new part. Now cables generally aren't cheap, which is annoying. I hate buying cables. Don't ever bin them. If you've been a lawnmower and the deck and everything else, just keep a few bits, especially the cables and springs. So I'm hoping this is going to cure my problem. I've tried everything else just at the minute that I know. I'm not sure if there's supposed to be another spring on the back of that that hooks up. I know there is on mine, but this mechanism looks slightly different in the back of here. So let's order a cable, and I'm going to show how to fit that anyway, because there'll be a lot of people wanting to know to replace this drive cable on these Mountfield SP470s. So what I've decided to do with this, I'm actually going to take the engine off this mower now. I've got this really handy impact tool. I've actually just unbolted this here. You can see here, I've just got these on the threads here. I'm actually going to take this off just so I can tip this deck upside down. And it won't give me a, a massively better access to in here. But at least I can tip it upside down without having all this fuel spill out. And this impact tool is really, uh, really beginning to pay for itself. I've got those three undone in no time at all. All I need to do now is just unhook this brake linkage from here on the back. I need to get some pliers and just push this back through here. 
and I'm just going to unhook this linkage here and this whole engine will just lift off really simple to do when you've got the right tools that's unhooked from there I pull that out and that just removes this brake release cable and if I take this off underneath set these nuts off here this whole thing should just just lift off this mower let's have a go at removing this I set three set three nuts off underneath and re just remove this cable on the back here this whole thing should just lift off out of the way get it out of the way and the drive belt just snagged on there we've got that belt off and I can just take this out of the way now lean it up against there block it over I keep falling over and then we've got access to this deck where I can turn it all over and I can have a really good look at this drive without worrying about oil and fuel tipping out. Look at that, that belt's off. I've got full access now to this drive. I can tip everything up and get in anywhere I want. I've not got to the hassle of getting around the blade or any of this drive belt or anything. I can get in there. And if you just see down there, I can just get access to this cable here. And from there, I should just be able to unhook this. So to get this out here, all I've done is get some needle nose pliers and you can see it's just removed there. All I've done is just pull it towards, out of the, uh, well, towards me, out of this transmission box. I've just pulled it towards me. It's just slid out like that. You can see it's beginning to unhook like that. So that pulls out the back here, I'm doing my best to film this, and that actually just slides. You see here, it's actually attached to this spring. So the next job, now I've got this pulled out, is actually just to remove this spring from the back of here, from the back of the drive box. I'm gonna try and film that for you now. Basically, it's just a case of unhooking the spring. And that's probably a better shot. Basically, all I need to do now is get the whole thing and unhook the spring from the back of this transmission box here. I'm gonna do that with some needle nose pliers when I've got my hands free. Unhook that from there, and I should be easily be able to just take all this cable away and just remove this completely and just replace it with another one. Unhook that, actually, I had to push it down and away to get that spring disconnected. Just pulled it down, not too bad, took me a minute or so, and I've got that disconnected from here now. See this arm where it moves? This arm actually should move quite a long way if everything's working as it should. Just have a feel of that arm, yeah. Make sure that's nice and free. I'm going to pull this cable out of here. We're going to replace this. I've just pulled everything back up through this hole here. Just push this up here. You didn't need to disconnect anything. Unhook the linkage from here on the top of this handle. And then basically pull it off and this whole cable comes off as you can see here. I've got all this cable off. And I need to unfortunately order myself a part here. Which is the drive cable for a Mountfield SP470. I'm just going to film this shot for anyone who is having a problem with the drive on the mower as well. Just while I've got the engine off and I've turned it over, a lot of people want to see what it looks like from underneath. So I'm just going to film this clip just to help anyone out. You can see right around where the transmission box is, what's connected where. And I'm sure this little clip will help a few people out. And that's all there is to it really. You can see here, this is this is the little notch there where the tip of my finger is there. That's where this spring is going to reconnect to. I'll hook this up when it arrives in the post. So I thought I'd film that little clip for anyone who's just trying to get the, the mower repaired. In fact, I have a dedicated video on these transmission boxes. If you look above in the top right hand corner of the screen right now, you'll see a card that links you to what's actually inside this transmission box and why these break and why it may or may not be worth replacing it. So take a look at that video. So it was a good idea to take a look at the connectors on these cables as well before you order a new part. Just to take a look and make sure they are actually going to match up with what you're buying because you do get little bits of uh, variation in things like this. So just take a look at them. If you see a listing on, online or wherever you're going to buy these from, might even, if, you know, if you're taking it to your local shop, take it with you of course, but if you're buying it online, just take a look at the end of these and make sure it's going to match up with what, what you're actually purchasing. So I think that's, this one's obviously uh, had its day anyway. But what I have got on the positive side is I've got a Briggs engine that's starting and running anyway. What's servicing? It's running a little bit sluggishly, but that's all away. Really easy. It's so much easier to do these than the other mower that I did in the last video. That SV200, which was a bit of a pig, to be honest. I've got that off. Once again, I can't recommend having one of these uh, tools, not particularly this one or whatever, but just a, an impact tool. This one's been great. In hindsight, I would have bought one that had adjustable speed, to be honest. I've done a review on this, and I'll actually link to that review above this video as well. That's on my other channel, so if you could subscribe to that after watching a review, that would help. But one thing it doesn't have is variable torque. It only runs one speed. It's on or off, forward or reverse. I think if I was to purchase another one in the future, I'd have a sort of variable torque on it as well, just so you're not snapping things off. Right, so just while I'm out here, let's have a look and see if we can take this, the bottom of this transmission box. I get a lot of requests asking what's actually in these. 
and I do have a video actually on the uh, YouTube site I'll actually put a card to that video in the top right hand corner of your screen now if you look up there you will see actually what's in these boxes but I just want to undo this one because I want to make sure that everything looks all right because I'm, I'm going to purchase a cable for this which I don't like doing and before I do that I just want to make sure that nothing looks like it's absolutely worn out right so now I've got these screws out of here what I normally do is well the only way I've really found to do it is just to put a flat screwdriver in here and just prise this bottom this transmission box off just gently prise this off from underneath and take this off so we can see inside it there we go so that's off and out of the way what I want to do now is just give this a quick check right so this is what's actually inside this transmission box i actually looked on youtube earlier today to see if there was uh, another video apart from one of mine that actually showed what was in this transmission box and i honestly couldn't find one not with the uh, the transmission box at the the back anyway i could find ones with one at the front that are really easy to get to anyway what happens here is you've got a gear here and it sits against this worm gear which actually and this is actually metal and on the uh, the previous video i put the card to in the corner this is actually one of these parts, anyway, I think it's this worm gear, is actually plastic. So you've actually got a metal gear on against a plastic worm gear. But luckily for me, in this case, this is a, a much better box because this is metal against metal. So this is going to last a lot longer. But under here, this is where the lever operates for the, uh, the actual cable. And I'm not sure if this just won't operate correctly because this feel, feels like it needs freeing off a bit. Although it's on a spring, it's not pushing over much. So... You can see here this lever where you pull the cable just operates this here basically just puts it on a kind of cam moves it moves it inwards and outwards as you can see here so at the minute you can see here if i turn these wheels here which is your, your self-drive turning you can see nothing's connected now if i put my hand underneath here and put operate the lever as the cable should do and actually push this forward and hold it there it actually sticks there because there's no cable to pull it back now with this lever activated, I've actually got my thumb down underneath here, look, I'm trying to wave at you. With that in the actual correct position, you can see both gears move together and that's what drives these wheels along. So what I need to do is make sure this lever actually pulls back on the spring with the cable on it. This is one of the reasons for taking the engine off. So when that connects, this is when it drives, and when I pull this lever back underneath, it disconnects as you can see there. So the wheels just spin so you can just push this along without the drive. When I push this lever back in towards the deck underneath, You'll see here that it connects again. So I'm not sure, 1000% sure, that the uh, the cable was a problem anyway. But I'm going to replace that anyway. But if I just take this back off here and back this lever off now, I can see that there isn't actually a problem with the box. If there is a problem with anything, it is with the cable. Or it is actually with this lever that's uh, not pulling back properly. It just feels a little bit like it's maybe not been used and started to rust about a bit. As you can see there, the gears are definitely working. So there's not actually a problem with this transmission box. And if I pull it back off the spring underneath here, I can actually see that these wheels spin free. So I'm happy with that transmission box. So the one thing I was mentioning about this lever not springing back, when you pull the cable in normal operating mode, this is supposed to push forward and it connects all these worm gears together, the worm gear and the other gear, and that's what drives the mower. But what's supposed to happen when I move my thumb here, it's supposed to spring back, which it kind of does a bit, but it doesn't come all the way back see that they just sort of sticks i'm not sure if that's why the drive's always engaged so either the spring's tired or i'm just gonna give myself a little bit of a chance i'm just gonna undo this nut here i'm just gonna spray all this up with wd and see if i can get this moving about so i don't think the spring's pulling this back as well as it should it might have just sort of started to rust on and so it's free enough so i'm going to spray this up with a bit of uh, penetrating spray some wd 40 or whatever else i might find I'm just going to back this off a little bit and see if we can get this moving about a bit because if it doesn't spring back properly the drive will still stay engaged even with a new cable on. You can see there it is actually freeing up a little bit so we'll just keep trying to free this one up and work this in for a few minutes. Okay so what I notice here without actually touching anything is how freely these wheels spin there's no problem there. So what I want to do now is I'm actually going to engage this lever as if the cable was there and push it forward you can actually probably see there's quite a lot more resistance there so if I let go with this hand here I want to see if it's in disengaged enough to spin freely which it has so all I'm trying to do is imitate what the cable will do by pushing it forward and there's more resistance what I want to know is when, when I actually let go here when I actually let go of this lever underneath does it come off far enough to release so these wheels actually turn freely and the transmission's disengaged which it looks like it has so I'm hoping I've freed this off just enough so when this cable fits it actually engages like that when it pulls it forward 
and it locks this gear in together in this transmission and you get drive and when I let go with the cable such as that it actually spins freely so that's as much as I can do really without replacing this box so we'll give that one more go you can see how free they're spinning imitate the cable by pushing this lever yeah lots of resistance so the drives all there let go again these wheels spin a lot freer than they did so when we get the cable should be here in the post tomorrow I'll pop this on and I've got a fighting chance of this actual transmission box locking into gear and then releasing as well if you're ever buying a part particularly online if you don't have access to a local shop or you can't find anyone that's that can stock one of these make sure you have a good look at the end of these and make sure they match up to what you're buying because if I take Mountfield SP470 drive cable in I don't know perhaps on eBay or I don't know Gardner spares or mowers and co and actually look at this it's actually got a different connector so I asked around and garden hire spares actually got back to me and said they didn't actually stock this part but actually gave me a correct part number for this cable because I looked everywhere on this cable and I couldn't find a number on it so I found the correct part and I've ordered myself one of these but just a quick tip if you're going to order a part take a look at it first and just make sure exactly that it actually matches up from the photograph to actually what you want to buy another tip is just to take the, the actual plate on the mower and I'm going to show you how to do that right now so the way I was able to find the absolute correct part for this I'll just flip this back over here and take this out of here that's a great way of keeping the deflector up what they want is the, the ticket on the side of it and I actually sent this off to a few different companies that sell these if you notice it actually says it's produced by Steger for Mountfield it's got a year on it which was 2002 it gives the actual product code of this mower and all the details that they need and from this product code they actually managed to source me the correct drive cable for this it's got a serial number on the bottom there as well there's the year there's the model and there's the product code and I just gave them this bit of information as well and they've supplied me with the correct cable so that should be here tomorrow and hopefully I'm going to be able to fit that and we're going to be able to bolt this back together and if you can see down here this cylinder shape with like a cutout what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook the cable on, I'm going to hook the spring on first then I'm going to pull the cable back through this cylinder part here at the back and then push it in from there this is why it has to be the exact right connector you see that little cutout there I think the correct order was to put the spring on and then pull it back through here and just push it through I think I tried to do this the wrong way on once and I actually got this so I was really struggling to get this spring on I found an easier way to do it but it's been a while I don't generally have to do these they're either uh, sort of working on or not but this is obviously I've called it Herbie because it won't stop going it just keeps running away on its own so when I get the cable I'll have a look at that so it doesn't really look like this is going to be the best sale I've ever had on this mower but I'm just repairing this and just showing it really for anybody who's having a problem with this self-drive now ordinarily what I'd, what I'd kind of do with something like this is I paid £30 for this I'd actually have been better off just stripping this down and actually selling it for spares if you consider I've just spent £18 on one cable that's hopefully arriving in the post tomorrow what do you think you might make from selling the spares off this I mean think about what's on it you've got the whole thing the recoil you've got the carburetor you've got the honestly the petrol tank wheel adjusters there's everything there's so many things even the handle even you know tiny little springs or the blade or the blade boss there's so many little parts you could sell at 10 pounds each so if you're not into repairing these and actually selling them on there are actually other ways than even repairing for profit even selling for profit would do if you can't be bothered to repair them and you don't want to learn these few small tips and tricks along the way that's fine just get yourself some tools strip these down and start listing them on ebay and selling these for spares i mean what do you think you might get for a cable i paid 18 pounds for a cable if you were to take a, a perfectly working cable off there and list it for 10 pounds I mean no doubt you'll sell it I've done it so many times myself before so although this isn't going to be my most profitable sale I really wanted to film this just to see if I could get this self-drive working because I can't remember how many views I've had on that self-drive video it was one of my first ones I've ever done I think it's got like a hundred thousand views so people are really desperate for this information which is why I'm filming the video so I've spent 30 pounds on the mower and I've spent 18 pounds so far on a cable so I'm 48 pounds so I'm looking to get back sort of at least a hundred pound for this mower to make a decent profit but the idea of this of course is to film these videos and help people out so if it has helped you out trying to look at yourself driving it saved you stripping all your lawnmower down do me one small favor just hit the subscribe button for me right so eventually what you've got there magnetic pickup zoom eventually this cable's arrived look how exciting how exciting oh, yes, mate totally. <laughs> so we're gonna have a go at putting this on what i'm gonna attempt to do here is i'm gonna attempt to hook this spring on the back first and then you can see here and then just pull this bit back through rather than try and get the spring on after so I'm going to attach this spring first and try and do it that way so let's see what we get right so let's push this through here if we put that through there you can see here this actual rubber grommet here you can see that there 
You see that there? That wasn't there before. That was actually not held there. It was actually pulled all the way through this mower. So we'll just push that through. I'm, not, I'm hoping it's going to come out of the bottom of here. Can you see this? See this slide? It's like a little slide. It's got to push down to get down to the bottom. Push it down a bit further and see if it's popped out. You can see here, we've got this cable. Right, so what I'm going to do first, you can see here this it's actually a gold part here. Let's call it gold. I'm actually, it's just the top of my finger there. I'm actually just going to push this into the, the, the side of this transmission box first. We'll just pop that in there first. And then I've got a bit of access to this spring here at, at the back as well. So hopefully I'll be able to attach that. But first of all, I'll just poke that in that hole there. So let's see if we can get this spring on the back. Using these long nose pliers, I actually managed to just grab that. You can see there, I've just pushed that in there. And obviously, this cable. If you can see through there, just slides through that hole there. So that's all correct. Now what I've got to do is actually hook it on here where the hole was. It was actually hooked up from underneath last time, so I'm going to try and do the same thing. And then this should be connected up and we can maybe pull this engine back on and just see if this actually works. Right, so as you can see, as I said, I put that in with the long nose pliers as well. Then I've just gone around the back here, just seeing here where the spring is. Uh, apologies for the wind, it's really windy at the minute here in the UK. I've hooked this spring on the back here. If actually just move this a little bit I can actually see that it's actually moving this lever correctly and everything's moving as it should so while I've got it in position I'm going to tip this deck back over and I'm going to clamp it to this handle here now if you're trying to do this and you've still got this part clamped to this handle you've got absolutely no chance because you've got no movement in the cable with it unattached from there you've got all the movement you want so I'll just put this in the front as I said and then I just put the spring on at the back a little bit fiddly but what I've got there is I've got a, a magnetic pickup tool as well I did have Someone's stolen it, look. Where are you going with my tools? Um, and I just use that because it kept dropping down. It's a little bit fiddly. It kept dropping down, so I just got the pickup tool and kept pulling it back up through with that magnetic pickup tool, which was really helpful. There's quite a lot of bend in this cable as well, so I don't, obviously don't want it popping off underneath. So what I'm going to do, just to give me a bit of a movement here, is I'm just going to cable tie this bottom bit here. You put that cable tie on there. Just cable tie that to the bottom of there, just so we've got a little bit right, of where's... movement. That's right, you pull that tight. That's enough. That's it. Now just well, you can pull it a bit tight if you want. Okay. You pull that a bit tight. Go on. See what strength you've got. What I'm going to do next is I'm just going to clip this up here. And that just pushes through there. And that's it. And what I need to do now is find wherever I've put this adjustment here in it. Of course, it's. Let's unhook that. Just take that back here. Right. Put this under here. Can you see? Put that under there. You can see here how much tighter it is, so I'm actually going to have to get a flat-headed screwdriver and we'll just move this adjuster down. I'll just undo this a little bit. I've got a little bit more movement then, haven't we? Let's put that in. I'll put this in now. Slide this down. Let's have a feel of that. It all feels a lot more positive than it did. So it's just a case of feeling this, really. I'm just tightening it up so... It feels like it's got a decent amount of tension on it. And I'm going to nip this back up with this screwdriver. So let's take a look at that. That certainly feels a lot more positive than it did before. So maybe we'll bolt this engine back on it and see if this mower's going to run and actually self-drive as it should. What we're going to do is we're going to do a bit of a test before we bolt this engine back on here because obviously this transmission box is dropping down because it ain't got the uh, the drive belt on it. So. If you, if I found to spin those wheels now, they spin nice and free. What if you pull that right to the top? If you pull that, just where it goes. You don't have to do, just pull it to the handle. To the yeah, you can see. I can, I can feel that, that that's actually connected the gear. You let go again, and it spins free. Pull again. Yeah, you hear that? Let go again. It spins free. So I'm happy that this box is working right, and this cable's actually done the job. So we'll bolt this motor back on. And we'll try it. Right, so we're just going to put this engine back on. It's all loose at the minute. What, what I want to do is actually put this brake release cable on first. So we'll pop that through this top hole here. Bolt this back on using this impact tool. So the next thing we're going to do is just reattach this drive belt here. We'll just put that on around the back of there. This is always a little bit of a fiddly job, but it's never that bad. Because you're working against the tension of the spring, you see, on the box. So. That's got that. I'll lift it over there. Sometimes it's just easy. Is that spark plug out? Do, 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 no, oh, yeah. It's disconnected. It's disconnected. Yeah. Then what we do is we 
make sure that's out of course. You see that, how we've got it on that pulley? Yeah. You see this? Yep. So if I just turn that, put it half on, it should just drag itself back on, which it's done there. So if we put this blade back on here now, we should be able to test this mower and then we can just put this belt guard on first as well, which I always forget to do. We'll bolt that on first, we'll put the blade back on and test it. And then pop this belt guard back on here like that. Right, so let's try this. This is the moment of truth. We've replaced this cable and checked this transmission box. Really sorry about the wind, it's just so windy and it's just terrible. Yeah. So I'm going to start this mower up, it might smoke a bit because it's been tipped up as the engine. But let's see if this actually works. What you're going to film, David, is you're going to film those wheels turning and hopefully me holding this and letting go of it again. And let's see if it starts. How was that then? Very good. All right, yeah. It? You said it? I couldn't do. You said you wouldn't bother, didn't you? So anyway, this lawnmower owes me quite a bit of money, as you can probably tell, it's running rough. It wants servicing up, but there's plenty of my other videos on the channel you can watch to learn how to do that. I'm going to do that uh, in my own time without filming that. But I hope this video has helped anyone out, because what we've done here is we've done what a lot of people wouldn't do, and actually replace this cable and just check this transmission box as well. I just ask one small favour. If this has helped you out and you actually managed to have a look at this and it saved you actually trying to do this job or having a go at it or helped you fix it, please do me a massive favour and just hit the subscribe button or click like or something because that really does help me out and it will help other people on YouTube find this video as well. So if you like what you've seen here at Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks very much for watching. Take a look at the end of this video. There's actually some links on either side to some of my other videos as well. Thanks for watching and I will see you again next time by the way just crossed over 6,000 subscribers so thanks so much to all the people that have subscribed that that means a massive amount to me and it really helps my channel as well thanks for watching see you again next time